listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello! You're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, your host, Deborah Wolf. And today we have something special. Y'all might know that I live at Camp Good Dog, way up north in Canada. Actually, the south of Canada, right, right near Seattle in Vancouver. But lately, there's been a lot of talk around here about a rally going on downtown in Vancouver today or tomorrow, November 12th. Actually, it's Wednesday. So the talk is heating up. The Facebook site is heating up. Everybody's talking about it today and tomorrow because on Wednesday, November 12th, 12 noon, everybody's going to be there. They say, bring your dogs, bring your cats, your guitars, your drums, your cameras. It sounds like a great little party. So today we have Pete Fry from the Green Party coming to talk with us. Welcome to the show. Hi, Deb. Nice to be here. Are you going to go to that? Uh, you know, actually, I had it down as the 15th. So if it's the 12th, yeah, I will go. The 15th, oh, nice. of course, is well, election I've day got... here in Vancouver. So the 15th was not going to be an ideal day for me. But if it's the 12th, I'll be there. Well, I've got it from the Facebook site, so I'm hoping I'm right. Everybody go check it out. It's Who Let the Dogs Out? The Rally for Change at City Hall. And it says it's Wednesday, November 12th at 12 p.m. So everybody go down to City Hall. If I was going, I would definitely bring a dog. I don't think I'd bring a cat. Pete, have you got a dog you could bring? Uh, I have a dog. I probably won't bring her, but I do have a dog. Uh, and I have two cats. And my oh, dog nice. has been... Yeah, my poor dog's been suffering away as I've been doing all this election campaigning because it's a lot of work, but she's a, a very dutiful dog and she stays with me as I'm working up till two in the morning and then she gets up at six in the morning to come back downstairs and sit in front of the computer and then get a few walks in there, but she's a great dog. Yeah. Having a dog on such a, a rigorous campaign schedule that I have, it's really a, a nice, as you guys all know, it's a great way to stop and smell the roses and it just forces me to kind of get some downtime and relax a little bit and focus on, you know, more important things. Like, Keeps you in the present and makes you go outside every once in a while. Exactly. But you know what I was thinking? Over the years, I've done a couple shows about politicians and their dogs. And I really think what dog you pick says a lot about you as a politician. And there are politicians who've actually hidden their dog of choice. Like Winston Churchill, famous for owning bulldogs. Actually, his favorite dog was a toy poodle. So <laughs> he just had the bulldog for the press, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, then, oh, and I can think of so many Canadian prime ministers. Well, Harper has a cat, but there's so many different politicians who've had different animals and what it said about them. The Bushes in America with their Spaniels and Obama now in the big debate. What dog should he get? Well, he got a doodle, but it was a fancy one. No, should he get a Portuguese water dog? Should he get this? Should he get that? And in the end, he gets one. But it's a Kennedy dog. Well, of course. Why wouldn't it be? You know? <laughs> and, and all this sort of stuff. So there is some politics behind it. Now, you, with the Green Party, what do you Well, I guess, it, I guess it speaks to the kind of person that I am, but my last two dogs my current dog and my previous dog have both been rescues and uh so she's she's what we call deep man mutt she's She's kind of a chef cross or something i don't know but she's an awesome dog she picked me actually i was after my last dog died i was you know pretty broken up over it he was my dog since i was a teenager and we'd been through some tough times together and he was and he died at at good old age but you know i I really uh realized after he died that that a dog is a huge part of my life and after about four months i was like wow i need to get another dog it's really is a big part of who i am and it gets me out of the house and it you know just gets me focused on being in the present as you said so I was they looking completely at dogs different pound. people, too. They did this study uh, in England where they tested these elderly people. And they took an older lady, and they dressed her up really great and sent her out to try and meet people. And then they dressed her up really great with a dog, and then they dressed her up like a street person with and without the dog. And they found that regardless of how she was dressed, if she had a dog, she had more social interaction than if she didn't. Oh, I Wait. believe it. Just you know, it's funny, actually, as I've, been, as I've been campaigning, I've got this new technique that I've been using because I'm out there on the, on the street talking to people as they walk by. And people with dogs, I just sort of stick my leg out a little bit and the dog stops because it's like, oh, wow, that guy smells like a dog. You know, because I got dog smell all over my pants usually because I'm out walking dogs and playing with other dogs. And yeah. so the dogs immediately stop and it forces the human to stop and talk to me. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's very, that's very clever. And they're already yeah. feeling at ease with you because their dog likes you. Very exactly. clever. Now, exactly. if you were a dog owner who didn't treat his dog well, the smell on you would not be happy, content dog. It would be would, anxious dog. So, yeah. 
fearful dog. So they're actually reading more than you think. They're actually doing a little character assessment of you, these dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm okay. You know, I've, I figure I got the dog vote cinched up, but, you know, there you go. I got to yeah. worry about. Well, what's this rally all about? I mean, I know that the picture on the Facebook site shows a, looks like a Shiba Inu, or maybe it's a Husky Cross older dog tied up to a front door. Is this rally about getting rid of I think of it's about dogs? adding a bit more teeth to the powers that the city has. You know, it's an interesting, interesting context. So my background, actually, before I was even taking a run at city politics, I was on the city of Vancouver's dog strategy task force from 2006 to 2008, uh, which was a very interesting experience. Of course, I was there as a dog advocate and, a, you know, a lifelong pet owner. And uh, the conversation was largely about park use and that kind of thing. But I really, it opened my eyes to a lot of the attitudes of people who don't like dogs. And there are a lot of them, you know, and, and a lot of these kind of issues about what kind of legislative powers we actually have in the city. And one of the interesting things, and this, so this, this rally is about the, the tethering bylaw, and there is some kind of nuanced stuff because the existing tethering bylaw, it also, what it effectively does, if you, say, go to a coffee shop or something or popping into the grocery store and you tie your dog up outside, that you could be fined or have your dog seized for that. So, Wow. <laughs> now, see, th- there has to be a distinction here. I, I totally I agree. agree that a dog shouldn't be tied up 23, 24 hours a day outside a, sure. a home or a factory and used as, a, as an alarm system. But I also think, yeah, when you go to Starbucks, you got the kids, you got the stroller, you tie the dog to the stroller, you're in and out. Why not? It gives the dog such a broader life than if he wasn't. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, so there you know, my dog to loves be. to go to the store. The yeah, there has to be some usually... flexibility. You know, and I used to have a, a wolf cross who was so well-trained, he would wait outside stores with no leash. But that made people a little anxious, you know. No I think maybe it's better for them to see the leashes in these cases. But it is yeah. it is a very, um, you know, you got to make a judgment call on this, and it's a personal decision whether you agree with tied-up dogs or not. Uh, there's a neighbor of mine who has a herding dog, a blue healer, that's really, really good at herding goats. It just won't stop. So when the goats are out in the field and he wants it to not herd them and not corral them and not boss them around, he ties it up. Well, that's not very much. Maybe an hour a day, something like that, two hours a day. The rest of the time, this dog has the best life a herding dog could have. Now, I'm going to help him teach the dog how to stop so we don't have to do this anymore. But really, is that abuse? No. But the person who leaves their dog all the time, it never gets walked, it's sitting in its own feces, it's got sores, the collar may have outgrown it, maybe it's turned aggressive from lack of stimulation. Okay, that's who we're talking about, right? Exactly. So we need to have more nuanced laws that address that specific kind of behavior. And of course, animal cruelty is a, you know, I'm I mean, I'm sure you heard the appalling news about that guy who uh, killed his dog, Captain, over the weekend. Did you hear the story about this? Yes. Have you guys covered that? Yeah. You know what? I really, there's this strong link sometimes between mentally ill people and abuse to animals. And there's, yeah. and it's really a tough one. We're going to go to a break and we're going to come back. We're talking with Pete Fry from the Green Party. And we're going to be talking about this and other related issues. And why should you vote green if you love pets or you love animals? Why? Well, we're going to tell you why. Stay tuned to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deb Wolf. Don't go anywhere, because the best is yet to come. Stick around. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert, President and CEO of American Humane Association, the country's first national humane organization. Here to tell you about our new show, Be Humane, on Pet Life Radio. Each week, we'll be bringing you the latest news and issues affecting our animal friends, and we'll also be bringing you interviews with Hollywood's biggest animal advocates, here to share tales about their pets and what they're doing to promote a more humane world. Our own highly experienced staff and friends of the organization will also join us each week to share what they're up to in the animal world. I hope you'll stop by. Until then, let's always remember to be humane. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> 
you're, you're, you're inside the VIP room with the hottest party in town. Back to the party. Let's go. Hello. We're back on Animal Party Pet Life Radio with me, Deborah Wolf. And today I have a very special treat, Pete Fry from the Green Party. I'm speaking to him for the first time. And we just accidentally touched upon a topic that's really sticky and difficult and important. And that is we had a case of abuse but sometimes an animal is abused or killed or mistreated terribly, and the person's mentally ill. So let's talk about that, Pete. How how can we even address this with our laws? It's so difficult. Well, I mean, we, I mean, this is of course this is a provincial issue, and this is you know actually provincial law. But I think we need to really strengthen the correlation between animal abuse and a propensity towards violence that could go over to humans. And I mean, that's the case with this fella. Who, well, uh, and was mentally ill, but he was violently law. mentally ill. It shouldn't be. It should be federal, right? This should be a crime, criminal. Yeah, it absolutely. Should be provincial or municipal, and yet it's like you damaged a chair. It's provincial yes. law. It's yes. only state law for those listening in the, in America. It's as if you didn't commit a crime against a living being. It's like you just destroyed some property. Oops. No, yeah. that's yeah. Be more intent on this one than that. It's not even graffiti would be similar about property, but even that is. Nobody died when you do graffiti, so... Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think this is, you know, a tragic case in point that this guy should have been flagged from the get-go and that, that animal cruelty is a serious, serious sign of mental illness. And, and not even mental illness, but actually, you know, a propensity for violence and, and a dangerous mental illness because, of course, mental illness in our province, we do have a classification for committing people uh, involuntarily if they're a danger to themselves or others. And I think we need to start flagging uh, animal abuse as, as something that... Uh, triggers that. Well, because there's all the stats and and research to prove it. There's no question. The people who do the most damage to other people often start with animals, and the people who start with animals almost always escalate, you know, and you know it's going to children next most of the time, so that's a horrible fact. So what other promises have you made that you think pet people in Vancouver ought to know about? What should they know about your party and you? Why should pet <clears throat> Well, you know, the Green Party, oh, I'll, I'll tell you, the Green Party is a very compassionate party. You know, that's at the core of our being is compassion and, uh, you know, respect for the environment and respect for others. So that kind of just permeates the entire culture of the Green Party. Now, my background, of course, I'm running for city council, but I've been involved in, in dog politics here in the city. And I, I, and I invite people to check out my personal website, pfry.ca slash dogs. And you can see some of the stuff that I've written about my experience on the dog strategy task force from 2006 to 2008. So, I mean, that was largely about parks, but it gave me a lot of insight into the larger issue of dogs in the city. So, pardon the pun, but this is going to be a pet project of mine. I'd really like to to reevaluate the relationship between the city and dog owners. So, what I've discovered through the Dog Strategy Task Force is there is a great deal of resentment uh, in the non dog owning population. Yes. Because at the time I was at, on the task force, we had sixty thousand dogs in the city, and maybe about twenty twenty percent licensing compliance. So nobody was getting licenses, and that's fundamentally because they feel the animal control really. They're paying for license, and all they do is harass them for being in a non-off-leash area. You know, and here in Vancouver, for instance, six months out of the year, the parks are empty because it's raining and it's gross. Well, that's the, the thing. You don't see owners. any. Yeah, you don't see anyone without a dog. So why can't you go there? It's it's a little frustrating. But I do Absolutely. understand when someone who is dressed up or even just not in the mood gets pounced on by somebody else's sure, exuberant sure. big dog. It's <laughs> annoying. And if you're on a horse, it can be dangerous. So I get that there's conflict. But one thing I just want to mention is it seems to me that when oftentimes when the authorities consider this, they look at how many people have dogs or the population that owns them right now. And they consider everybody else non-dog owning. Anyone they don't have proof has a dog is a non-dog owner yeah. and assumed to be on the side of less off-leash parks, less contact. But which, I don't think that's right. Which isn't actually the case. You know, no, actually I think that I there's a lot force. of people, yeah, there's a lot of people out there who have a dog now or used to have a dog or will have a dog in future or wish they could have a dog. You add all them together and uh, the ones who really don't want dogs around are in the minority. So I really yeah, no, want to emphasize that a, one. We had a survey that indicated that 80% of Vancouverites, you know, endorsed the idea of off-leash spaces and recognized that it was a value to the community and that they didn't have a problem with it. I think, you know, well, where people it makes get every upset is when... Safer. It just does. It makes people who want to cause problems to other people think twice when they see a big 
dog that will bark at them or chase them sure. running around the park. So it well, makes you know, one of the big issues that- here in Vancouver actually is yeah. social isolation. We have a huge problem with social isolation, and and it, it's actually a, so much so that it's actually become an election issue. And to my mind, one of the greatest tools uh, to thwart social isolation is actually getting out there and meeting your neighbors and being involved in your community. And I I get that through having a dog. It gets me out on the street every day, twice a day, meeting neighbors, seeing what's going on. You know, I used to walk dogs, and when I was in a park, even with just one dog, two dogs, other people would cut through the park more. Women, children, people would be more comfortable staying in the park. And, you know, I think that's just, it's important. It's important for all of us, because I don't want the parks to be considered dangerous and to be left to the bad people because the good people won't go there and dogs so help with that. I mean, every time there's an attack, you hear the RCMP saying on the news, don't go here without a dog, we'll go come in twos. Yep. There's a reason yep. they're saying that, you know? It's really true. So, okay, so why why should people vote green if they care about pets and animals specifically? Not just because you're kind-hearted and... What well, I'll t- tell you what, one of the things that I would like to do when I, when I get elected to council, this is sort of... You can consider this a pledge. This is something I'm very interested in. Is changing that relationship with animal control and the city. So a lot of the resentment comes from the fact, for with non-dog owning people, is the fact that because there's such low licensing compliance, our animal control operates at a deficit. So we have a no-kill shelter, and they're they're very compassionate in animal control. But of course they do enforcement, but they have a no-kill shelter. People resent the fact that their tax dollars have to go towards paying for animal control. Now, right or wrong, that's a legitimate complaint. And, you know, oftentimes people get very passionate about the dog issue and they they say stuff like, oh, well, you know, my dog is my fur baby and stuff. And that just, for the anti-dog people, they're like, oh, see, they're crazy. Dog people are insane. You know, an animal's not a child. (laughs) That's funny. And so without getting into that judgment level, I think we need to, you know, recognize the notion that whatever your relationship with your dog, you know, treat it as a family member or as a dog or whatever, you're a taxpayer. You pay for you know, the same services that we all take advantage of. So, well, in fact, I bet that the the animal owners, the animal owners are paying more taxes because it's very hard to have animals and rental accommodations. So they're going to be disproportionately uh, homeowners and probably a little more affluent. So they're going to be paying a lot more tax. Really? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. My point being that what we need to do is redefine the relationship. So whereas the city has all sorts of great outreach for, you know, say cyclists or community gardeners, or field sport recreation players, they engage them in a, in a positive manner. And we need to start doing that with the dog owning population so that people want to get their licenses because the animal control is doing more engagement and encouraging more responsible dog ownership and, you know, people to have, pick have up their dog food, the, not because it's the law, but because it's the right thing to do. And so have really you considered the, the relationship. Have you considered the American Kennel Club Good Canine Citizenship Program? Have you? Co- what they do is, if your dog passes that test, he has more privileges than if he doesn't. And he gets a special badge he gets to wear. So that's the dog who gets to wait outside Starbucks. That's the dog who gets to go to the supermarket because he's got his Canine Good Citizenship badge on. And it's that's a the obedience of, that's test. That's the kind basically. of idea, yeah. The dog has process. to be able to, you know, not only come sit, stay, heal, and behave himself, but also if a stranger touches him, he doesn't do anything unpredictable or aggressive. If a loud noise goes off, he doesn't do anything dangerous. You know, it's a yep. basic, if your dog passes, he's safe for the public. And so that would be yep. a great thing to do because then people would want to qualify, get the extra privileges, right? And maybe yep. even yep. pay a little less on their annual bill because... The way you give a deduction for neuter and spay, maybe they could give a deduction for canine good citizens because those aren't the dogs causing the problems that cost the money, right? Yeah. Well, and I think just in a general, in a really general sense, a more engaged approach for animal control. So it's a positive thing. It's not an adversarial relationship, but it's a positive relationship. And we embrace all the good things about dog ownership and start bringing out the positive rather than making it a negative thing. And then people will willingly pay for their licenses. And then we won't have an issue where animal control operates at a deficit, but instead operates at a surplus. And then we can start focusing on issues like animal cruelty and stuff and put more more power into the hands of, of our local animal control department to address those issues and not have people resent it because their tax dollars are paying for it and they'd rather see it go to, you know, you know there's a worthy point like child say- care. And when you say more power to the local authorities, because I think there's a lot of vigilanteism. There's a lot of people going around getting dogs off chains and do what they think is the right thing. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they don't know the full circumstances yeah. when they do it. But a lot of times the authorities really want to deal with a the dog. They want to rescue the dog. But the standard, I mean, the dog has some food. It has some water. It isn't in yeah. immediate danger needing vet care or surgery. Maybe it has a whole lot of conditions. Maybe it's neglected and filthy. 
but their hands are tied. And that's where we have to improve things, where the authorities can do something. Because, you know, you get these hoarding cases and these cases where horses are starved to death or dogs, you know, having to live with no food for until they're hurting each other and all this type of stuff. Cats, too. And, you know, you just wish the authorities could move in more easily, quicker. Because I've been there when they've gone to these hoarding places. I've been one of the people asked to come and help catch dogs, catch cats. And they end up having to negotiate with the person. They have to befriend them. And it's very difficult to watch. As soon as the person says, get off my property, you have to go and leave these animals stuck there. It's just horrible. And you can tell this person isn't 100% mentally well because they really think they're doing the best for these animals that you can see need care. So it's an area where we really need some help with that. So I'm glad the Green Party's thinking about these issues. I'm not sure if the other parties are thinking about them. Everybody, check out the Facebook page if you're in and around Vancouver. It's at Vancouver City Hall. It's Who Let the Dogs Out? Rally for Change at City Hall. And it's November 12th at 12 p.m. And this is what they say. Bring your posters, friends, your dogs, your guitars, your drums, cats, and cameras. If you can't come, please sign the petition. So everybody everywhere, if you believe in this and you don't want to see chained up dogs, neglected and tormented and just left alone and in need of much more care and a better life, if you don't want to see that anymore... Sign the petition. So thank you so much, Pete. I guess you've got a busy day. Where are you off to next? I'm off to a Green Party team meeting to plan out our week. We've got events nonstop and lots of hustling to do. The election, of course, is, uh, well, advanced polls are open now, but the election's this Saturday. So there's a lot of work. And, you know, we're asking people to vote green first. Just uh, we're not trying to take the entire slate. We just want to have the balance of power and have some more accurate representation on city council and parks and schools. And, you know, we got a great parks team and I've coached them extensively about a lot of the dog issues and they get it. And one of the other things that I didn't mention but really want to do is uh, start getting dog waste out of like out of the uh, garbage stream. So waste Oh, that's such a good this, point. It really uh, bothers me that we take this non-toxic biodegradable substance, dog poo, wrap it in a plastic bag and throw it in the landfill to never ever decompose. I mean, what is that about? I, I know, it's insane. It is insane. And you know, there's all sorts of options out there. There's now we have the technology thermophilic digesters can turn it into compost. And in San Francisco, they piloted and this was years ago. I tried to bring this up in 2006. They have a process where they they harvest the methane gas and they actually create fuel out of dog poo. It's amazing. You know, and we can yes. easily do that with biodegradable bags in all of our parks, dedicated poo bins. We have 120,000 dogs in the city. That's a lot of dog poo. And, what you know, about we're really cats? trying to be the greenest city. Well, and that's the thing. I think we can easily extend in. that. But it is natural, usually, the cat litter. Like, could you do it? Could you conclude the cats? Because that's the heaviest I, you know, I think, bag I every think we week. Need to keep the, we need to keep the litter out of it, like no gravel, uh, per se. But but I scoop the turds out of our cat uh, thing just because the dog will try and get in there and eat it. So I, I just scoop them every day anyway and flush them down the toilet. But we could just as easily, you know, scoop You know the you're not eating them all, right? I mean, it's probably a good idea to build a very wide bookshelf just a little bit higher than what your dog can reach and put your cat litter up there because yeah. <laughs> it sounds like your dog's got the buffet open when you're not on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's, that's why I got to do it every day. She's oh, a smart dog, yeah. so. <laughs> and the dog can smell it from, you know, two doors away. Oh, oh, the oh, cat yeah. just pooped. Oh, yeah. I want to go home. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming and joining us today on Animal Party Pet Life Radio. Pete, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, you too, Deb. Take it easy. Okay. All right, everyone. That was Pete Fry from the Green Party in Vancouver, British Columbia. As you can hear, we're having a big rally on Wednesday. Bring your dogs, bring your cats, bring your drums. I would suggest not bring your cat. I think they put that in humorously intending it only to reach those who have extremely well-behaved cats on tether and leash license. But honestly... That is a nightmare for a cat to be at a dog rally with drums and people. Most cats would so much rather stay home. So I would say bring a picture of your cat, a real big cute one. Bring a drum, bring a camera, bring a dog, bring a friend. And it's November 12th at noon at Vancouver City Hall. And for the rest of my listeners, you can go on Facebook and sign the petition. Okay, everybody, until next time, from me, Deborah Wolf, Animal Party and Pet Life Radio, be good to your animals. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. The 
The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other hosts or advertisers on the Pet Life Radio Network.